the high seas, high seas. Cast my line, now they're biting. Rocky coast and lighthouses, what she knows now I doubt it. Talk to me nice. I think your confusion starts with street lights. Hey Taurus, welcome to your January 2019 reading with me and happy new year, you guys. So let's just talk a little bit about astrology. That way you know, you know, what areas are being affected, and then we'll get right into your reading, which I have already pulled to save time. So Taurus, we've got Capricorn energy and Aquarius energy this month. Capricorn is a fellow earth sign. So Capricorn is your sister sign, and this is going to be your ninth house of beliefs, long distance travel, higher education, and expansion, philosophy. Capricorn represents an energy that you can learn from, an energy that, that gives you the opportunity to teach things that you've learned in life as well. So we've got that very strong earth energy. You had a, a new moon in your ninth house so this is setting new intentions to learn to grow and that was on the 5th of january okay we've already experienced that and we do have another um eclipse uh later on in the month it's going to be in leo which is going to square you taurus all right so we'll talk about that more in my leo full moon video um in a couple in a few days and um after capricorn season and aquarius season starts We'll be going into your 10th house. The 10th house is all about career, uh, long-term goals, the next 10 years um, into the future, your legacy, you know what I'm saying, finances, stuff like that. Very serious energy that Aquarius represents for you, Taurus. And Aquarius actually squares you as well. Okay, so we've got some fixed energies at the end of the month. I'll talk more about that in February, but just keep in mind that we do have energy coming into your 10th house at the end. So in a nutshell, you know, January is occupying the energies of what you can learn and what you can do in your long-term future, okay? How you can expand, um, education, stuff like that. If any of you guys are involved in anything about learning or education, anything about school or, you know, your beliefs as well is another big thing to talk about with um, this Capricorn energy the first couple of weeks of January, that's all about what you believe. So, you know, when you combine these energies, it's about what you can learn and what what you believe about your long-term goals, okay? So this is a pretty good month for you, Taurus. Um, let's get into the reading now. So uh, I do this this reading every year in Capricorn. I did it last year, and it's my metaphorical mountain reading. So this is when I use the tarot to build some sort of mountain, and what this is going to do is show me where the potential op where the potential obstacles are for the sign of Taurus in the month of January. So just keep in mind as we're reading these cards, all these energies could be a potential obstacle for you, okay? But the good thing about obstacles is that we can climb over them, okay? Capricorn is all about, you know, having the ambition to make it up a mountain, okay? They're the mountain goats. So we're going to take a look at uh, what this energy is, Taurus, and we're going to start here on the foundation because every mountain needs a foundation we can't really have we can't build anything you know we can't build anything without a foundation and you know that Taurus you're an earth sign so we're gonna start here at the foundation this could be your home environment this could be the basis that everything is built on um, in the month of January so the first card we have coming out for you is the eight of Pentacles so this came up for the reading in uh, for Aries that I just did this is about uh, working on something, okay? This is about perfecting something, some kind of skill or craft. You know, the Eight of Pentacles is always a person who's working really hard at making their own money, okay? Spending a lot of time studying and perfecting. So, for an example, um, if you sing, then this is someone who's taking vocal lessons and uh, going out to sing karaoke. If you cook, this is someone who's looking up new recipes. So, whatever you do for work or whatever your skill is this is an energy of really working hard at perfecting now this is a woman who's knitting a blanket so I don't know if anyone crochets or knits if so your energy is showing up here this is also a card that to me speaks of someone who is doing something with their hands that make them money so if you make any jewelry or if you make any if you write stories or if you paint if you use your hands to create money um, as an entrepreneur, this is you working really hard um, in January, especially um, in Aquarius season. We do have Aquarius season showing up here for you because Aquarius represents your 10th house as a Taurus. 
So Aquarius represents that very serious career energy, okay? So maybe some of you guys are, you know, spending some time really trying to make some extra money, especially in regards to some sort of wish that you may have, because we do have the star card coming out next. This is the Aquarius card. So some of you guys could even be working on something with an Aquarius energy, or, you know, um, you know, maybe there's a relationship there with an Aquarius. Maybe you have a friend that's an Aquarius, or that, or you work, um with an Aquarius if I haven't already said that. But this this to me looks like something that someone's working on, okay? Whether you work with an Aquarius or, you know, other than Aquarius energy, this is the star card and this is talking about some sort of wish that you have, okay? This is talking about something that would inspire you, something that would give you faith and hope in a situation. So I don't know if this is uh, in regards to your relationships, Taurus, or if this is just a wish that you're working on, okay? Working on being more inspired and more uplifted, having more faith in a situation. If this is a relationship, whether it's with an Aquarius or not, it could be another Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn as well. This looks like um, someone who still has faith, so they're continuing to put in effort. Because that's another thing about the Eight of Pentacles, is that this is someone who's putting in effort, um, either in a job or in a relationship, just with something that you value, Taurus. And we do have Aquarius here. So your dreams, your wishes, your inspiration, your faith and your hope, are coming up here so you may want to look to the stars to to kind of guide you with that okay because there's some kind of wish here Taurus maybe the, there's a wish um, as far as some sort of entrepreneur energy or there's some kind of wish financially that you're putting work into okay because you're literally creating your own craft you're some of you are creating your own money um, in very unique ways which I understand that as a Taurus because I'm a Taurus moon but Taurus is the second house of resources. Like, on, on the zodiac wheel, Taurus is the second sign. And the second house has everything to do with finances and personal resources and possessions. So some of you guys just have some sort of wish when it comes to what you could do. It, could, it looks like a hobby, okay? Some of you guys want to turn your hobby into more of a career this month. So, um, yeah, that, that's really awesome to see that. Now, we're going to continue on down the road here with your foundation. So, we have the Five of Pentacles, Taurus. So, the Five of Pentacles is the financial conflict card, okay? All the fives are some sort of conflict. And in this case, it's conflict financially because someone feels a bit left out in the cold emotionally, mentally, physically, financially. Someone feels a little bit alone here. And when this card comes up, it is my job to say you are not alone, even though in this card it does show a woman who's on her own. But she's outside of a church, okay? She's seeking sanctuary. I don't know if any of you guys are dealing with feeling homeless or feeling like um, like you can't escape poverty. Because the Five of Pentacles is speaking to uh, either experiencing poverty now or just some sort of, you know, a lack of funds. Like, you know, between all the bills and responsibilities, it seems like you can't keep your finances as stable as you would like them. This is something you've endured in the past, Taurus, or something you're going through in January. But there is some sort of uh, financial conflict in your foundation. So you're trying to build a foundation on something, even though, you know, you you have a really fear. I don't like when this card comes up for Taurus, because Taurus is always fearing uh, the lack of stability. That's a Taurus thing. You know, Tauruses are very afraid to spend money, um, you know, and it's hard because you guys are ruled by Venus. So there's a lot of comfort things, you know, there's a lot of things that you guys like to do. And unfortunately, because you're a Taurus, um, that comes with fear, you know, buying something for yourself and then immediately regretting it. Like, oh my God, did I really need that? You know, uh, next month I might need that extra money. So I'm not sure where this energy comes into play. Some of you guys could be feeling left out in the cold in your relationships or, you know, in your families or at your job. Like, maybe you guys just want to make more money. That makes sense with the Eight of Pentacles coming up. So some of you guys might be picking up extra you know, extra hobbies or extra ways to make money because Tauruses are really creative because you guys have endured this, okay? You guys are all about resources and finances and value. So sometimes Taurus can see value in something when other people can't. For instance, if there's a Taurus around and they're, you know, they'll have a garage sale and they will see something that could be sold on the internet or that could be sold for $50, you know what I mean, when other people would have just thrown that out. So one man's trash is another man's treasure. So this is about, you know, really honing in, especially around that, the, you know, this to me is a strong message about Aquarius season. And 
you know, you guys might not be feeling this early January, but by the time Aquarius season comes in, which is January 20th on, so from January 20th to February 20th, that could be a month where you guys are really looking at your long-term goals and finances. It might not be that there's a lack of funds now, but you could be fearing that in the future, Taurus, especially with Aquarius being your 10th house. That's exactly why you guys do fear uh, money in the future, because Aquarius is our aliens, Aquarius is our the future, and the 10th house is all about money. So the future of your money is coming up here, and don't let that energy make you guys feel alone and out in the cold and homeless. Don't fear those kind of things. Do your best to use that energy to ground you. And set intentions, you know, follow your whatever it is that, that would be a wish to you, whatever would inspire you. You know, this is about working on staying inspired, even though there's a fear here. Uh, there's some kind of financial conflict. It's really, really giving Taurus a headache. You know, there's some, some really, maybe even some arguments about finances. It's causing a lot of pain, though. Okay, it's causing Taurus a lot of worry. And I'm not sure if this Aquarius... Um, energy, maybe it's just Aquarius season, but for some of you, there is an actual an Aquarius involved here, whether they're your boss or your best friend or your mom, or, or there's some kind of Aquarius, you know, that this fi financial conflict could be associated with, or maybe it's just, you know, not having enough money to follow your dreams right now, okay, not having enough money to put work and effort and money into, you know, this hobby that you have, or something like that. And moving on here, we have the Page of Cups as your last card for your foundation. So this is my emotional conversation card. It is a Pisces for some of you. It could be a Cancer or a Scorpio or any other sign. If you're not dealing with a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, this is about expressing your emotion. Taurus, this is definitely, you know, after everything we just talked about, there, do, there does need to be some sort of conversation where someone expresses themselves at an emotional level. Um, the Page of Cups is also a fertility card, so there could even be pregnancy going on on top of all this, or just children. The Page of Cups is a younger child. Some of you have a daughter, okay? So that might be, you know, when, we're, when we have children, we fear financial uh, instability even more because we have families to take care of, and we have homes and pets and bills, and, you know, it's like letting all that kind of really scare you into the future, okay? Scare you about the next 10 years of where you're going to work, you know, where's your effort? How's your effort going to pay off the next 10 years? But it's about putting that effort in now so that in the future, you know, your future self will thank you. So, yeah, there's there's definitely um, some kind of message is what I was going to say here. Okay, there is a message, Taurus. It's an emotional message because this is a page. Every page has a message. All right. So there's going to be um, a message. And when it's the page of cups, this is a message that, that you're going to respond to emotionally. Okay. Now, I don't know if it's good emotion or bad emotion, but there's going to be an emotional response here. Now you could be the one sending this message. Someone else could be sending this message, but there is some sort of emotional conversation or message, a uh, text message, letter, you know, even a, a, um, a mouth to mouth conversation. You know what I mean? So there is definitely some water sign energy right here in your reading, and we'll get to that as we climb up the mountain, but it looks to me like this conflict might even be causing emotion. Like, you just the best thing here, Taurus, is to really communicate what you feel, okay? Communicate what you feel. Communicate in a compassionate way. You know, this is a very, this is a love, this is a love offer. I didn't mention that, but for some of you guys, there is an offer of love here, okay? The Page of Cups sometimes... That emotional message is somebody who's admitting their feelings to you or maybe you know you're you're giving a love offer to someone some of you guys feel left out in the cold uh, with someone that you love all right you feel left out in the cold with all this financial fear with your dreams and your wishes and um, you're left to do all the work in the relationship but there is this love offer here some of you guys feel emotionally left out in the cold okay like you you feel like you can't communicate your feelings about all the things that are stressing you out. But let's continue up this mountain, Taurus, and see how the, this these play out. So now we have the sun card, which is the happiest card that you can give. We do have a woman here who is blonde. So, you know, if this looks like anybody to you, it could be their energy. This woman is very beautiful. She's in a red dress. And this is the card for Leo. Um, it's also the, the children card. So some of you guys have children. Maybe there's a one of your children are Aquarius. Maybe one of your children are a Leo. Um, but yeah, this is someone who has either you know a daughter or a son or maybe both. 
And this is about your happiness, Taurus. If you don't have any children, if you're not dealing with a Leo or any of that, this is the happiest card because it's about clarity. This is a huge light being turned on, okay? So maybe there's some, some sort of love that comes in um, during a time where you feel all alone. You know, this person comes at the right moment, if so. You know, you feel really left out in the cold and stressed out. And then here comes this page of cups. You know, this emotional person who's probably a little bit younger or at least a little bit um, ill-experienced. Okay, but this love offer comes at the right time and this might make you really happy. It might bring you clarity. It might bring you joy and warmth, especially here. We go from feeling very left out in the cold to the sun really, really shining. Okay, and we have the sun card right here um, with the eight of Pentacles and the, the star card. So there's going to be a light that shines on one of your, your we have the star and the sun and the sun is a star. So there's a huge star here, Aquarius. The sun is the center of everything. So I feel like there's a lot of happiness here that, that you're going to be working on, okay? There's happiness in relation to someone who's putting in effort, okay? Some sort of inspirational happiness, okay? This inspires you to be more happy, to be more loving, to be more warm. There's sunflowers here. You know, this may or may not involve the Leo full moon, but it looks like there's some light being shined on, something that inspires you to continue working on something, whether that's a relationship or a hobby, or even working on your, your own self, you know, your own appearance, your own um, self-confidence, because the sun card is all of those things, okay? So there is a light here that's shining and, and bringing warmth and happiness and joy, vitality, success even, to this wish that you're working on, okay? Maybe it has to do with an Aquarius that's making you happy, or um, a Leo that inspires you, something like that, Taurus. Um, let's continue on here, but we do have Leo and Aquarius here, and, and those are two opposite signs, okay? So I'm not sure where this energy is coming in. It could be Aquarius season when there's a Leo full moon, because right when Aquarius season starts, there is that Leo full moon eclipse, and uh, that is going to be in your third house, I believe, fourth house, Taurus? Taurus? Yeah, Leo is all about your fourth house of home. So if there's anything in your home environment, this could be finances in the home, Anything in your home environment that you're working on, Taurus, um, there could be some completions there in the home environment. There could be, um, you know, something that changes in your foundation. It's interesting. Taurus is actually going through foundation stuff in, uh, you know, January. The next card is we have the Ten of Swords, okay? The Ten of Swords, and I forgot to mention, Taurus, this is um, one of the most important cards because... Sorry, I didn't mean to shake the computer. But this is the center of your reading, okay? This is the card that's in the center. So this is all centered around some sort of painful ending or some sort of, um, you know, either either decept... Tyson, my dog is barking. Um, some sort of pain, okay? This is the ending to a painful situation. And again, we have the sunlight shining right after the sun. So I feel like there's going to be some clarity uh, this month, Taurus, about something that ends in a painful way or maybe something that has already ended in a painful way. Now, when I hold these cards up, this is like, you know, the loss of happiness, okay? Someone here feels like they lost uh, happiness due to deception, backstabbing, betrayal, painful endings, you know, all of those things. The Ten of Swords is very, very painful. I like this card, though, because the swords are hanging up here instead of being stabbed into the person. So this is about hanging up some sort of pain, okay, in order to, to be, to let happiness in again. So if this is someone who is separated, like some kind of relationship that ended, you know, this is about finding your happiness again. This could be with a Leo for some of you. You know, if there's any Taurus Leo energy going on here, especially if the woman has blonde hair. I see a woman with blonde hair. hair. I also see a woman with that's brunette. I see a redhead here. So, you know, I like to look at all the energies here. This this woman has red hair. If you take a very close look, her hair is red. This woman's hair is a brunette. So, you know, you know, you, you might just need to know those small details. But this is someone with blonde hair. I'm not sure if there was someone with blonde hair involved. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm, I definitely still have a cold. Um, <coughs> goodness. But yeah, the Ten of Swords is speaking to some sort of you know, painful situation that this is all centered around in December, or in January, excuse me. But the, the sun is here to, to shine light on you, Taurus, okay? Even as you're laying there, some of you guys may actually be experiencing pain, 
like physical pain it's more of a mental pain you know this could even have to do with that Aquarius I think this pain has to do with um financial conflict also being left out in the cold you know so there was there was a wish that was left out in the cold too for a while like you guys know that there was something that you were wishing for and I think it was um some kind of hobby or some kind of you know you guys are all gonna have different wishes whatever it is that make you happy um that was left out in the cold and this ten of swords has a lot to do with the Aquarius maybe there was a there was Aquarius pain Gemini pain Libra pain maybe this is just mental pain but because I do see some headaches if you guys are having headaches I feel a woman here that has a headache but again with that Sun you know shining um, this is the light at the end of the tunnel Taurus there's some happiness coming in here after a painful situation has finally completed and again it has something to do with a wish that was left out in the cold an Aquarius that was left out in the cold um, financial you know conflict now the next card we have is the Queen I'm sorry the King of Cups so we've got a male Scorpio here we have a female Scorpio we've got cancer we've got Pisces this is a very um, you know sometimes the King of Cups he doesn't express his emotions very well okay people always say the King has mastered his emotions but you know part of mastering your emotion is knowing when and when not to express your emotions so this could be someone who drinks okay this to, this always reminds me of someone who drinks beer or drinks wine like it's alcohol just of just because of the way this person is sitting okay it's almost as if they're disregarding their emotion even though they're very close to that tide like hey dude the tides getting pretty close and they just don't care this king of cups gives me an interesting vibe like someone who's very emotional and they're emotionally drinking you know drinking their feelings so that they don't have to feel so then this is like a numb energy just for some of you and I feel like it has something to do um, with this ten of swords like some of you guys could be dealing with pain or painful endings with water signs uh, Pisces cancer Scorpio this is a Scorpio okay woman or man it could also be emotional pain okay this could be some sort of emotion that you're feeling maybe you drink a little bit after this painful ending okay maybe you maybe you want to have a couple drinks or something like that this painful situation could be with an Aquarius it could be with a Leo it could be with a water sign it could be with any sign because I do see that there's just someone here who's going through pain and when it comes to trying to find their happiness emotionally but this is about mastering those emotion you know being strong leading in an emotional way um, being Wearing your emotion on your sleeve instead of, you know, pretending to be this person who doesn't feel any emotion about any of this stuff going on, okay, Taurus? So, you know, you want to express yourself, especially because the King of Cups is coming here with the Page of Cups and the Five of Pentacles. So if there's something that was left out in the cold emotionally, there needs to be a conversation about that. Maybe it involves a child for some of you. Maybe there's a love offer from a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio in, that was left out in the cold before or that left you out in the cold before. Maybe there was past pain here with this Scorpio. Um, you know what I'm saying? So this could this could be all together here. There could be some kind of Aquarius involved. Um, but yeah, I do see children um, here for some of you. Someone might have been left out in the cold with a child. Okay? And now there's this very distant water sign all right so there's different ways to explain this but i feel like the pain of being left out in the cold emotionally is coming up here because we have pain and left out in the cold emotionally and this all you know there's just someone here that needs to talk about that especially getting this king of cups to talk this this pisces cancer scorpio person you know expressing the emotion you know there's some stubbornness here someone who is still upset about something painful and there's be there's emotions being withheld even though the emotions are very much there okay so let's continue on here Taurus and we'll see what else is coming up so we're moving up we're almost to the top of the mountain and we do have Aries this is the Emperor card so if you guys are dealing with an Aries there could be something here significant if you're not dealing with an Aries this is a father figure if it's not a father figure, this could be an authority figure, someone that wears a uniform, someone who's in control, a boss, okay? This is a very controlling person. And we have this emperor right here with the ten of swords and the sun card. So I do see a painful ending that happened with an Aries for some of you guys. 
and um, you know this Aries made you very happy like there was a, a situation of happiness with an Aries that came to a completion it came to a painful ending because of maybe deception maybe um, you know backstabbing or betrayal but this emperor here now some of you guys your father could be in pain or the the father of your children the father of your children are coming up here Taurus because we have the Sun card and we have this father figure that is pointing down at this Leo so I don't know if there's a Leo and an Aries involved here somewhere Taurus but it looks as if this is also about you taking control and being in charge and an authority of your own happiness whatever would make you happy it's all about rising up and basically commanding that because if you see this emperor here he's definitely telling a person place or thing what to do okay so i always want to look at what the emperor is pointing at he's pointing at this leo some of you guys may have a leo dad or you know something like that but the emperor is also pointing at what would be a child a um a daughter or a son so there could be some kind of father figure here that's order giving orders there could even be a father, this the father of your children. There could have been a painful ending to um, the mother or the father of your children. Okay, and if you don't resonate with that, Taurus, this is about commanding your happiness after some sort of pain, okay? Maybe it has to do with your boss. Maybe, maybe someone here, um, something here about authority. But again, it's all about what would make you happy. Now, the next card is really interesting. We have the Strength card. So, these cards did come up for Aries. Um, so, you know, with these two cards here, it's really interesting. There's these two wolves, okay? There's this wolf that's being told what to do, who has red eyes and very angry. And then there's this other wolf that is laying down. It's like, I feel like this wolf was attacked. I feel like this wolf is sick or harmed or something like that. But we literally have Leo and Aries here. This is the Aries card. This is the Leo card. If you're not dealing with a Leo or an Aries, you know, your father could be a Leo, the father of your children could be a Leo, the mother of your children could be a Leo. Um, this might be talking about strength, the strength to run an empire, the strength to rise up again and still fight, Taurus, because we do have some sort of strong leader here, some kind of strong, you know, something here needs to be tamed. Someone here is ready to attack, and I feel like there's some kind of dictator that is... You know, feeding this person something, making this person, you know, feel attacked or, or, you know what I'm saying. You can see it in the Emperor card there. But really, you know, this person just needs to be tamed. There's someone here who's quite upset that needs to be calmed down by some kind of lovely, angelic woman here. But I do see that, that someone here tames another person. You know, Taurus, you could tame an Aries. Because the Strength card is all about taming a situation, especially when we see these two wolves here. You know, so we put the Emperor card back here on the Sun and the Ten of Swords. And then we, we put the Strength card also on the Ten of Swords and the King of Cups. So, Taurus, the Strength card, there could have been a painful situation there with a, with the Strength card, like a Leo. There could have been an, an ending with a Leo. Um, there could have been an ending... There might be some emotion with the with the Leo. The King of Cups is touching the Leo card. So this is about emotional strength. The, the emotional strength that it takes to to rise up again into your authority. Take it... Okay, so here we go. This is about the emotional strength it takes to get up and gain control over your happiness again. No matter what signs are involved, no matter if this is a relationship or personal or, you know, at work... This is, this is, that's what this is saying, you know, because someone here does feel like giving up, especially emotionally. There's a lot of mental pain going on here, revolving around conflict emotionally. There's some people who are left out in the cold. They felt like someone didn't care about them emotionally. And, um, you know, there's something here that came to an end, and I'm not sure if this was a wish for happiness that was that ended because of betrayal or something like that and we also have this Aries and this Leo so if you're dealing with a Leo it looks like they may have something to do with this ten of swords you could have been betrayed by an Aries or a Leo um, there might be some emotion here with a Leo as well the love offer could be from a Leo now Taurus this is the most important card of your reading okay because it's the very top of your mountain the very very top of your mountain and the top of your mountain 
is the Three of Cups. So once you reach the top of this metaphorical mountain, Taurus, there will be something to celebrate. But I also want to tell you guys that this might be an indication of a third party. Okay, I'm not sure if this is just about getting together with friends, but I always notice there that, that there's one of the women that are no longer, she's not raising her cup like the other people. So there could be a third, there could be an emotional third party, which means somebody could be, you know, detached emotionally, even though they're connecting with a person emotionally. Like, this looks like people that know each other, you know what I'm saying? Like, all of you are friends, but these people are connecting on the down low. So this person in green doesn't know that these people are connecting. This person is holding her cup over here with this, this could be an earth sign, an air sign, and a water sign. So I don't know if there's a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This is probably you, Taurus, celebrating with a water sign. But this water sign secretly has this air sign. And if this is an air sign that you're connecting with, there, you know, this is someone who's detached. You're going to have to really look at this image. Now, I don't know if this is the same woman with blonde hair, because we do have two women with blonde hair. And then someone with brown hair. But, you know, this is a celebration. So celebrating the fact that you've overcome something, okay? Celebrating. At the end of this month, at the when you reach this, this moment of success at the top of this mountain, you are going to want to celebrate, okay? Now, I don't know if this is a third party for some of you guys. This could be three women. If you're watching and there's three important women in your life, then they're going to be celebrating with you, okay? Maybe you're going to be celebrating with an Aries and a Leo, some of you guys. So just keep in mind that all of this could be potential obstacles, okay? Authority could be a potential obstacle for you, Taurus. Strength, having the strength to, you know, rise up and, and be in your own authority. You know, maybe you're having some obstacles with your boss or at work, especially if you are a boss. You're getting getting happy, Going after what makes you happy after pain and betrayal emotionally could be a potential obstacle for you, Taurus. Finances could be a potential obstacle, especially when it comes to something you're wishing for, a new home environment, love. Now, Taurus, expressing your emotions could definitely be a potential obstacle, okay? Or dealing with people who see expressing their emotion at a, a could be an obstacle, you know what I mean? So just keep that in mind. Now, the bottom of the deck is the Knight of Pentacles. So, you know, another obstacle here is maybe a Virgo, but this is all about stagnance. You know, the Knight of Pentacles is really slow, and he's hanging on to that pinnacle. So there could be something financial. I mean, these cards seem to be going together. You know, someone feels left out in the cold, maybe by a Virgo, but also the financial conflict is because something is just not moving fast enough for you, Taurus, but... You know, this is a message financially that you've waited a long time to hear. And the good thing about the Knight of Pentacles is that even though he or she moves slower, he shows up with what he told you he was going to show up with. So if the Knight of Pentacles promised you $10, when he gets to you, you're going to get that $10. Because some of the other knights, you know, they move too quickly. They don't always show up with what they were talking about, okay? But this is a burden. There's definitely a heavy burden, like waiting for this. Whatever this Knight of Pentacles, maybe it's a Virgo, maybe it's another Taurus, maybe it's a Capricorn, maybe it's a job. The Knight of Pentacles is all about um, hard work, okay? And it's interesting. We have a lot of hard work here. Like, Taurus has really been working hard, especially during that 10th house Aquarius energy. Taurus is really going to be working hard at, in their relationships, at work, at their jobs. But, you know, this is something that is burdening you. And... When it comes to something that's moving too slow, Taurus, you may drop that burden, especially if it's about a home environment, okay? Someone here is really dealing with a home environment, especially with that Leo um, full moon in your fourth house of home. So there's some kind of burden that was dropped here because maybe it took, you know, too long for a message to come in, but now we have an indication of a very fast message. This is very fast communication. It's even travel, okay? The Eight of Wands is travel and communication, Air travel, international travel, so, you know, planes and stuff like that. Um, this could be a letter that comes to you in the mail about a job. Maybe it's a phone call or a text message or email, but the Eight of Wands is a message. Now we have the Five of Swords, Taurus, so there's definitely some conflict, okay? There's definitely some conflict regarding the home environment. 
Taurus, and you've been feeling this, someone here just doesn't want to fight anymore, okay? There's a single mom here because we have the children there. You might have a, f a couple children or maybe even more children. But this is about the happiness that goes into a relationship and a home, okay? Blessings and feeling abundant emotionally, but there is some conflict. There's been some arguments involving children. There's been some arguments involving marriage and home environment and emotions, okay? And someone here has kind of dropped that and they don't want to argue anymore, or fight over it anymore. That's why these two people are kind of standing back there. But the good thing is, is that we have the world card and the world card brings things to completions and it allows you to celebrate that. So we do have celebration here and a new beginning. Okay, you guys are going to be hearing some sort of information. I feel like it's a letter because I see so many, so many images here where there's someone who's holding a piece of paper. So there's going to be some kind of uh, message about a new beginning. Now, you may have to take a risk. It could be with an Aries. You might have to take a leap of faith. But, you know, someone here, and I don't know if it's a spy because the page of swords is under there. So this is definitely about communicating. It's some kind of message or something, maybe with a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. But I do love to see that there is a completion to a cycle when it comes to conflicts in the home environment. Okay, messages here. This is the Eight of Wands again. So there's going to be some kind of message that completes something. And I like to see that because the bottom of your deck is, you know, someone who's been working way too hard. Even though things have been really slow and stagnant, you know, whether it was with a Virgo or not, this could also be a Capricorn Taurus. And I see that this burden has been dropped. The Ten of Wands, very heavy. Heavy, heavy work burdens, financial burdens. So we have that Knight of Pentacles at the bottom. Which is, it's kind of about moving slower. So moving slower, Taurus, in January could be a potential obstacle for you as well. But, you know, sometimes when you're climbing mountains and stuff like that, it's better to, climb, to, to move a bit slower. So, before we end the video, um, I have this card here. I've chosen a card for everyone. And this is my Iris Oracle deck. It's very interesting. And I chose a card for everyone. So, for you, Taurus, you have the Justice card. Obviously, this gives me a Libra energy. So, there could even be some kind of Libra energy. If it's not a Libra, Taurus, this could even be about going to court. It could be, you know, the legal system, the judicial system. I don't know if any of you guys are dealing with court stuff, divorce, something like that. But this is justice, all right? So let's read a little bit about justice. It's the card number 16. So it says, The wise judge knows that to make a decision in one direction means ending the path of the opposite choice. Something may live and something may die. When you make hard choices, possibly, possibly choices that affect others in their lives or emotions, you may be swayed by the convincing voices of others. Trust your ability to make the decisions that you feel are the most right. You can't please everyone, but you can live on knowing that you made the choice that you felt like was right. So, wow, there could be some choices here, Taurus. Um, this is talking about a wise judge, okay, knows that. So, I love that it said... You know, um, something must live and something must die. And in order to make a decision in one direction, that means ending a path in the opposite di direction. So again, Taurus, you know what I'm saying? This is about, I mean, I think you guys are going to know what this means for you guys individually. But it's definitely about making the choice that feels right to you. You can't please everyone, but you can live on knowing that you made the choice that you felt like was right. So I don't know if that involves Libra or court, but it's interesting it talked about death and stuff like that because we do have the death to the deceitful card. So this is about, you know, letting anything deceitful kind of die away because we have, yeah, Taurus. This is just important to show you, especially because it's 75, 76. This is the death to the deceitful. I'm going to show you what this said here. Weight of truth, death to the deceitful. So those energies just kind of go together, obviously, because they're 75, 76. So, Taurus, hopefully that resonated. Let me know if you guys want a personal reading. You can find all that you need to know in the description box. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys on the Full Moon and Leo video. And if I don't see you there, I'll talk to you in February.